So I'll bring it to you. Yeah, you guys are back there. Yep. I just want to say, son, do the thing. <laughs> do the thing, can, son. Can you do it? Can uh, you do the thing? I am here to do the thing. All right. Um, so are, are we good or just yeah? <coughs> All right. So I'll just give you guys a countdown. Uh, there's the foot pedal on your foot. Yeah. You, you hit the foot and pedal to start. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess uh, three, two, one. Uh, let's go. Um, so this is Joyu Kengeki Muso, and we are playing on easy. Difficulty actually isn't a huge factor in this game. Um, Jay, if you, you'd actually like to go over some of the differences in difficulty real quick. I can do that. Uh, the biggest difference for the run is on easy mode, the yellow orbs above the life bar recharge the fastest. Uh, they did an interesting thing with damage scaling in this game. Yomu's health remains constant at 300, but every other value scales up and down with difficulty. So that includes Yomu's attack. So I believe like her spell card on normal does 300 damage, and on easy it does 280 damage, and on hard it does 380 damage. Yeah. Now, you might have noticed I just jumped through a wall there. That's, that's completely intentional. Yomu is half ghost, uh, so she doesn't <laughs> care about walls. <laughs> that's the, yeah. They don't exist. What Sen is actually trying to say is by clipping through that wall, he managed to skip the first mid-boss of the stage, well, the mid-boss of the yeah. stage. Uh, so uh, all of this ice is on the ground, and we don't really know why. I don't, I don't just think, there. I don't think there's a Toho character that involves ice. Um, if there was, she probably wouldn't be very strong. Um, we're here to fight the real boss of the forest, uh, which is actually one of the harder bosses in the game, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I really hope he doesn't jump on me. 
So here's everyone's favorite Toho character, Giant Frog. What? Excuse me, it's my second favorite after Giant Catfish. <laughs> Um, the trick I just did there is called the spell card glitch. By activating Yomu's special attack as I entered a screen transition or a cutscene transition, I get to retain control over Yomu. Oh, that's some bad luck. Um, during the cutscene, and the boss has a hitbox, and he has health during the cutscene. Okay, so I can just yeah, give him a smack. That uh, trick is only available in version 1.0. It was patched out in 1.03. Yeah. Um, the beginning of stage two is pretty uneventful, so if we have a donation or something, now would be a great time. We sure do. We have First off, we have an anonymous $500 donation. It simply says MSF Power. And we also have a $100 donation from Malkior. Sent pie, notice me. <laughs> oh, wow! That was, That's uh, what you get. There. I, I know. I noticed him, and then I fell <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> Greetings from your gigantic family. Best of luck during your run. P.S. Grandma says hi to the GDQ crew. <laughs> Thanks for running such a spectacular display of gaming and generosity every six months. Also, this money goes to Tasbot Mega Man Glitch Run. Um, so yeah, the, the main speed tech of the run, as Jay mentioned, in easy the orbs recharge faster, and that lets the, the orbs let you use Yomu's special moves. One of them is uh, this dash attack, which is faster than walking, so we use it a lot. And the it other also, special moves are not dashing. It also yeah. lets us uh, make jumps we're probably not supposed to make. So there was a cave here, and it's kind of like it's a gone maze, now. but it's we we don't we don't care. Oh, weird jump there. <laughs> the um, half-pipe logs have some weird geometry to them. I'm going to do the spell card glitch there again, and I'm going to hit the pot so I actually get the damaging part of it on Marissa. Just saves a little time. Um, as soon as Marissa finishes her cutscene, she's going to... Uh, well, first she's going to troll me, and then she's going to Master Spark. Enjoy the bloom. Um, so the idea with this fight is I kind of, ah, she went under me. I kind of want to lead her to where I think she's going to go next, uh, just to save some time. She's dashing a lot to the middle. She can either um, run to the middle and spin some stars or stay where she is and shoot a laser. Um, running to the middle is better, but I'm, I'm not used to her doing it. I usually get terrible luck there. Um, so this is actually probably the biggest glitch in the run that I'm going to do at the start of the stage. Um, we're actually going to use the spell card and then save and quit. Um, because when Yomu uses the spell card, as far as we can tell, it sets a flag that pauses all of the AI in the game. Um, and by saving and quitting during that, we can play the game in this paused state. Which doesn't do a whole lot for you right now other than make the screen a little darker. I like it, you know, some nice ambient lighting. Um, but we'll really see the effects of it when we get to the boss of the waterfall here. Um, one thing worth mentioning about this stage is that uh, some of these platforms are on cycles with each other, but some of them are just completely random um, in where they start their cycles. So there is a bit of RNG into, uh, and I got some good RNG right yeah. there, into where the platforms are and, and how quickly you can get through certain parts of the stage. Uh, other than that, it's, it's really not a terribly eventful stage, so now would be a, a great time for some donations. Uh, none screened here at the moment, but I just want to remind everyone that you are watching Summer Games Done Quick. Uh, it is a speedrunning community marathon uh, done every summer, and it benefits Doctors Without Borders. Um, so coming up, we in the, the first stage of the game, we skipped uh, the first mini-boss, uh, Cerno, for 
just missed that platform. Um, sir, no, for anyone who didn't get the uh, jokes we were trying to make. Uh, this stage is the only other stage in the game to have a mini boss, and unfortunately, you guys aren't going to get to see Momiji either. Uh, we skip her too. Well, as long as you don't. Yeah, as long as you don't mess up. <laughs> well, no, but I, I am going to fall off of that. So <laughs> let's uh, let's just take it slow. <laughs> the uh, marathon nerves are, uh, are real sometimes. You can catch this platform on its first cycle uh, using a dash jump. Yeah, if you had made that jump that I was trying to make, you would have caught it. So here's where normally we would fight Momiji, but we can just kind of walk on the outside of her arena and leave her. You can also do it from the other side. Thankfully, that doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> so w one really annoying thing about this game is uh, this game really likes to hold your inputs forever. So I actually inputted that uh, dash yeah, before, before I died, died, and then I respawned and dashed off again. Um, so here's really where the, the save and quit glitch comes to fruition. Normally, we'd have to fight Aya up here, but Basically, she's frozen, and for whatever reason, that glitch messes with her health bar, so she dies in like three hits instead of that entire health bar. Yeah. Otherwise, she's a really annoying fight that just she, she gets a lot of invulnerability. And just... She has a very lengthy uh, special attack that you actually cannot skip. Uh, if you do enough damage to her to the point where you would kill her before she uses it, she, she actually it starts anyway. taking zero damage. She will use her spell card before she dies, and it is a pain. Uh, so I'm, I'm very glad that we don't have to see it. Oh. So this area is a factory. It's uh, quite maze-like. You've got to find these two switches to open these doors, one on the left, one on the right. But we're just going to open one and jump over the front door. Mm -hmm. It boom, fell off. It was actually found fairly recently that you can um, jump over both. Not uh, not lining this up very well. It was found fairly recently that you can jump over uh, both of these doors, but it is um, very precise. I believe uh, possibly frame uh, frame perfect, um, and maybe maybe even like sub pixel perfect. It's quite ridiculous, and I'm having a lot of trouble with that door. There we go. I. The, the marathon luck is real, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so again, we, we have another classic Toho character here that everyone loves, the Gundam. Yeah. No yeah. clue why this is here. So the reason Scent had to cancel the AI glitch is if you get to this boss, it doesn't have a hitbox until after the conversation is over. So if he had kept the glitch, he would not have been able to beat the boss. Does the glitch also cause it to not die, or am I thinking of a different glitch? Um, yeah, you, you can hit the arms infinitely, yeah, but you can't but damage the part of the boss that actually take damage. takes damage to the health bar. Yeah, You can break that boss's arms off to stop him from attacking, but it's, it's a it's complete waste pointless. of time. Pointless, yeah. Also, the stage one boss, if you do the AI glitch, yeah, he just you can't die. kill it. It has infinite health. Um, so we're clearly not supposed to do that jump. We're actually going to skip uh, pretty much the first half of this stage. Um, there was fairly recently, or at least recently for this game, a trick discovered that allows you to skip uh, these moving platforms even faster. but. Um, Honestly, it's just, it's not marathon safe overall, in my opinion. It saves a couple of seconds, it looks really cool, but it loses a lot of time if you fall in the water. Um, so I'm just going to take the quick and safe route over. Um, Jay, do you want to explain Remu stage while I uh, run through it? Sure. Normally, there are, I think, about nine or ten of these little orbs that power seals. And you're supposed to go through this cave, uh, destroying them in order to, in order to advance. Uh, but we're only going to destroy the ones we need to in order to 
uh, clip through a bridge. Normally you want to destroy these large orbs that are powering a giant barrier to get to the end of the stage. But with the clip, we just go behind it. So the reason I jumped off there and seemingly did nothing was there's actually an orb hidden under the death plane, under the water, pretty much at the very bottom of the stage. Yeah. And for whatever reason, the spin attack's hitbox uh, extends downward. Yeah, it, it's far. active for a while as well and just hits it. Um, also, if you slash your sword while Yomu takes damage, uh, she flips out of the basically falling down or the taking damage animation. Yeah. And it's, uh, so you can keep moving. You can keep moving. Um, this is Reimu. She's annoying. Yeah. How many fantasy seals are you going to get? Um, probably two. Probably two. Well, there's, there's one. one. <laughs> so Reimu is not very good at aiming. It's a nice safe spot. Oh, hey, Cheerdo actually did appear in this game. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This safe spot, I believe, disappears in patch 1.2, which also adds an extra stage. Ah, yep. There's the second. And gets the game uh, ate my input there again. If you noticed, I dashed as soon as I got up. Oh, well, at least uh, we get to see more Fantasy Seal. <laughs> um, and with that, we're actually already on the last stage of the game. Um, I can't read Japanese. I, I proved that earlier during Trap Tower. So we, we've kind of made up our, uh, our own story to this game. And uh, essentially, as far as we can tell, um, Yomu just really wants cookies. Um, it, I mean, if anyone's actually heard the story of any other Toho game, it makes about as much sense. Uh, so Yomu rampages across the world looking for cookies. Um, now, we, Jay and I actually weren't the first uh, people to run this game. Um, there was a Japanese runner who played 1.0 normal, I believe. Um, and Jay, I, I think you looked his name up uh, last yes. week. It was Erumoa. I had actually found him when I started trying to speedrun this game, and basically all the big skips I stole from him. Um, so yeah, we, we came up with a few things, and then actually uh, fairly recently a, a pair of runners, um, Alcatorn and, uh, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name mid-fight, uh, picked up the game and started playing, uh, I believe, 1.04 hard. So a, a lot of variety in the categories and even the versions people uh, have run on this game. Um, and I mean, shout-outs to everyone past, present, future who's taken Kingeki on for a little while. Anyway, that was a final boss, but like any good Toho game, we need a survival spell card. Um, it's, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's a shame you don't have full spell card meter, so you can fool yeah. around with the camera at the end. It is. Why don't we just run circles around her? Oh. Oops. All right. Maybe, maybe we won't be too silly. Um, there are a lot of things you can do to fight this boss. Uh, really, you just need to survive eight waves of these butterflies. You can jump over the balls. You cannot jump over these red butterflies. They'll actually jump up to greet you, but um, you really shouldn't have to. The, the red balls and the green and blue butterflies are aimed, so just tapping twice, and that's actually time. I can't find the foot pedal, though, so hopefully I hit it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was uh, Yo Yugen Keki Muso. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed it. I think it's a, a pretty fun, fast speed yeah, game. It's a and quick game. Yeah. And then even characters who didn't appear in the game show up. They all have a picnic. As it turns out, our story wasn't far from accurate. Mm. So, uh, yeah, th thanks everyone, and, um... <laughs> All right, that's that. It's, it's, it's acceptable. It had some